Bam, Mr. True. Well, we're going to continue our discussion of factoring polynomials today, specifically looking at a sum and difference of cubes. We just got done looking at the difference of squares. There is no sum of squares pattern. There's only a difference of squares. But when you're talking about a binomial where both the first and second term, or both of the terms are perfect squares, uh, you can have a plus or a minus sign in the middle of those two terms. So we have a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. And we are looking for each of those terms, again, to be a perfect cube. Um, and thus, we can take the cube root. Like our first example we're going to do here in a second, this has a uh, this y has an exponent that's divisible by 3, so that would be considered a perfect cube. And 64, we can take the cube root of 64 and get a nice whole number uh, integer answer, whole number answer. Well, an integer answer, because you can take the cube root of a negative number as well. Difference of cubes. Um, so the cube root of 64 is going to be, well, 4, because 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 again is 64. So we have a squared plus b, or excuse me, a cubed plus b cubed is equal to, well, we're going to look at those and identify, we're going to cube root the first and second term in, you know, as a whole, the numbers and letters all together, and we're going to identify a and b and then put it in this pattern, a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Just plug it right into that pattern. Uh, if you don't know these patterns for factoring the sum and difference of cubes, uh, you could have a very, very hard time uh, trying to get that factored. You really just want to know these formulas so you can just plug them in and work and then finish it out. Otherwise, you need some uh, synthetic division and craziness to try and get that third degree down to a second degree and find a perfect uh, factor of that. So we don't want to bother trying to do this by you know, mentally working through it. We just want to follow these patterns. A cubed minus B cubed. You can see it's the same pattern except for the plus becomes a minus in the uh, binomial. And in the remaining trinomial, uh, the middle term, instead of having a minus, has a plus. So a minus b times a squared plus ab times plus b squared. So y cubed plus 64. We're going to look at this and go, OK, well, let's pick a different color here, green. So we're going to cube root the first term. So a is going to be equal to y. We're going to cube root the second term. And that means that b is going to be equal to 4. Uh, I'm writing these out. If you identify A and B before you start plugging into the pattern, that might help you um, to make a, you know, minimize your mistakes. Or if you consistently get these accurate right off the top of your head, that's fine as well. But for teaching, I'm writing out A and B. So uh, we have a sum of perfect cubes. You may also want to write this as 4 cubed plus, um, or excuse me, y cubed plus 4 cubed, so you can really, again, see that pattern. But at any rate, it's going to factor out to be uh, cube root of y, or a is, uh, a is equal to y. So we're doing uh, a plus b, so y plus 4 times a squared, which is going to be y squared, minus a b. So that's going to be a and b. I'm going to put the, the number first that's more standard, so we're going to say 4y and then plus b squared. And b is again equal to 4. So plus 4 squared, or of course 4 squared is equal to 16. And we generally want to just you know, simplify that as much as possible. So there is our answer. y plus 4 times y squared minus 4y plus 16. We have two more examples. This one also is very straightforward. We have 8x cubed minus 27. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you can have, of course, you know, a coefficient in your first term as long as it's a perfect square as well, and that is 8. The cube root of 8 is equal to 2. The cube root of 27 is equal to 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, just like 2, 2, and 2 is 8. That means that A is going to be equal to 2x, because when we take the cube root of that power of 3, it's going to divide it by 3 and make it 1. And B is equal to the cube root of 27, which is equal to 3. So following our pattern for a difference of cubes, we have a minus b, so 2x minus 3, times a squared. Now I'm going to do some parentheses here just to make sure that we don't make any small mistakes when we do our work. You really should do this one step at a time. So a squared plus 
AB, so plus 2x times 3, plus b squared. And that, of course, is 3, so 3 squared will be 9. Since I'm showing all the steps, let me just go ahead and write that 3 squared again. So we have 2x plus, uh, minus 3. Now, 2x times 2x, or, sorry for the interruption. So we have 2x minus 3. Now, 2x squared is 2x times 2x. Or 2 times 2 is 4, or 2 squared is 4, and then x squared. So we have 4x squared. 2 and 3, when you multiply those together, you get 6. So plus 6x, and then 3 squared is equal to 9. So there we go. And if you want to make sure these are right, of course, you should take these and distribute them back together and make sure that they do indeed equal the original problem of 8x cubed minus 27. Now with this problem here, we do have, again have a binomial, but 2 is not a perfect cube. We have the variable of y in both of the terms. It does not have an exponent that's divisible by 3, because that's what happens to exponents when you take the cube root, you divide it by 3. So it seems like, well, it's not a difference of cubes. So why am I talking about it? Because the first step of factoring polynomials should not be looking for a difference of squares or a diff some difference of cubes. It should be factoring out a monomial. Is there anything that all the terms have in common? Well, 2 and 16 are both divisible by 2, and both of these factors, both or terms, excuse me, both have a factor of y. So the GCF here is equal to, they both have a 2 again, and both of these terms can give up a y, and indeed they both only have one y. So we're going to factor a 2y out of these terms. So 2y times 2x cubed y over 2y minus 16y over 2y. And what's going to happen? Well, the y's are going to cancel out here in the first term. The 2's are going to cancel out. And over here, the y's are going to cancel out again in the second term. And 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. So we have 2y times x cubed minus 8. Now I've taken one step of factoring. A lot of times factoring problems do take more than one step. And now inside the parentheses here, we have a difference of perfect cubes. So we are going to uh, finish this up by Again, refer to these patterns. So we have 2y, the cube root of x cubed is x, the cube root of 8 is 2, and there's a minus sign in the middle, so it's going to be x minus 2 times, well, let's see here, a is x and b is 2, so it's going to be x squared minus, or excuse me, plus, because that's a difference of, cube, uh, difference of cubes, so that means it's minus here and plus here, plus AB, so 2x plus B squared, or 2 squared, which is equal to 4. And that is the end of that example. Now, I've got one here at the end. It's um, probably a question that's near the end of your assignment where you're still um, you know, studying just the sort of mechanics of doing this type of factoring. It's going to have powers of 6. So let me show you what that looks like. Bam! For our last example, we have x to the 6th minus y to the 6th. Now, these exponents that are in this binomial, and it is a difference of something, uh, they're both divisible by 3 and by 2. So really, you could argue this is a difference of squares or a difference of cubes. Now, if I do a difference of squares pattern first, and I can do that because uh, both of these terms are perfect squares, when you take the square root, what happens to the exponents, again, is that they get divided by 2. And 6 is evenly divided by 2. So we're going to walk this through a difference of squares um, formula. And then, because when we divide 6 we get by 2, we get 3, we'll have a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. And we use that pattern to finish the problem. So pay attention to this as if it were a, or doing this uh, in the first step as a difference of squares. When you square root x to the 6, you get x to the 3rd. And when you square root y to the 6, you get y to the 3rd. Again, that square rooting process divides those exponents by 2. So we have x cubed plus y cubed times x cubed minus y cubed. And now we have a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. And there's very little going on in this, in this problem, so you know, we're just going to write down the formulas that, we that we're learning 
um, in this video and be done. So this is going to be a sum of cubes is cube root both terms. So we have x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And now we have a difference of cubes. And so that's going to be x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. Let me make sure I wrote that down right. Yep, I did. So that's, you know, kind of a little bit of a special case you might see in an algebra, um, algebra book for uh, one of the harder problems for solving or factoring sum or difference of squares and cubes. So, I'm Mr. True. Go do your homework.